Okay, this is part two of painting Zograd Warzenegger. Now, if you haven't seen part one, I'll put a link down in the description for you. So looking back, in part one, we primed it, put the base colors down. So in this one, we're now gonna take the those base colors a step further. In this one, I'm gonna have some fun with it. I'm gonna do some chipping, I'm gonna do some weathering, and use some enamels, and have a play with it and see what I can do. So, that's enough of that. Let's go play with some paint. This is a white ink. It actually comes from a starter set, and I saw a a box set of four, no, no, I saw a box set of eight of them for half price. So I thought it was worth a try. I actually really like how this is covering. Now I was gonna paint this shoulder pad uh, in like a rusted metal, but it, it was sinking into the background too much and I wanted to try and make it pop a bit more. So I'm gonna go with, it, with the white. For an ink, this is really highly pigmented. It's uh, it's going on quite nicely. Because the, the Vallejo Model Air is quite translucent. You can see the paints coming through it if you do it a couple of layers, which is great because you can play with it by using different colors to bring different tones to it. So I usually put a whole red on first and then go over with a brighter color. And likewise, it's quite good to use to add a bit more shade when you've put the brighter red over it. Now this white shoulder pad is still a bit too white. So I'm gonna add some gray in here and a bit of shadowing, but also to take that white down a bit so it's not quite so bright. I keep using different amounts of gray and white to wet blend in. Now the minute, because the lighting, it's, it looks very white in here, but it's got some nice tones going through that shoulder pad. a bit of extra highlights onto the, the nose here. Uh, ugh. A bit too much on the base of the nose there, but I'll take it back down again later. A little bit on the top. Yeah. A little bit more. That'll do for now. You see there the difference between the fire red over the whole red is a lot darker tone than on its own. It's quite a bright red. Now I wanted to add some orc gifts onto his shoulder pad, so I'm going to use the three small dots, which is there for uh, grots or runts. And obviously, as he is a legendary runt herder within the game, he's going to have to have the runt herder gift as well. Now, his hair is still very, very light and very blue. He uses dark blues to add a bit of shade, a bit of variation into this hair. It's not really actually hair. From a lore point of view, they're all individual squigs individual kind of organisms which kind of either clamp or they staple <laughs> onto their heads to give them hair. Strangely enough, known as hair squigs. That's, that's his main hair done, but I've done his the rest of his hair as a separate sub-assembly, so I could therefore paint the face and everything else. So let's dry fit that in place first of all. And now that's done, I'm going to add a bit more blue to add more shading into the hair. And because their hair squigs not like true hair, um, they're individual little, little animals, so they're going to have their own colour variations anyway. So I'm not going to treat it 
like a pure hair and pure light and dark. Uh, let's see how that goes. Now time for some chipping. I'm not going to use any chipping medium or nothing like that. It's a really nice simple effect by using a, a dark brown. So I'm just going to put this along some of the more exposed and areas that are going to get more bashes and scrapes. Now once you've done that you then use a more a lighter brown and you kind of put it around the lower edges of those, those scrapes. Now especially if you're doing a larger model, there's loads more you can do with this sort of technique by using different colours. Um, but for now I'm going to use the Vileco Model Rust Wash and just as a kind of a, a loose, almost, almost like a streaking effect. And also where the rust, the watery rust is pooled around some of the rivets and the joints. Now I, I love chipping techniques, there's tons of things you can play with here, but for now I think this looks good, this will do. Now I want this top piece of metal to look very, very rusted. So I've done it like a darker brown, and now I'm going to kind of stipple on a, a more orangey, rustier brown. For this, I've used a really old, semi-destroyed, knackered brush, just to um, just to stipple on that orangey paint. Now, gotta love this stuff, streaking grime. Now you can use this for in loads of different ways, um, for making kind of slime deposits, or generally for where water's been running down walls, or for making things look grungy. But it's also really good for taking the, uh, give like a, a weather, a tarnished tone to any metallics as well. It's really good for making things look used. Now it's important the way um, not to overuse this. Now I'm kind of painting this on. Uh, there's loads of ways you can play with this using reductive techniques and things. But for now, I'm just going to very lightly apply it. Now it's time to play with some enamels. This is AK Interactive Engine Grime. It is an enamel, and if you're not careful with it, it can then damage your acrylic paintwork. Often you will apply it over a varnish, so you varnish it first. But for this one, I'm going to very carefully place it, and in my experience, it works out fine as long as you're not too rough with it. And it's really good for, for depicting those places where we should get that oil residue which then kind of attracts that dust and grime and that kind of claggy build that we get in engines. It is quite matte so just be careful you're not going to take down that metallic finish too much. Now this is the AK Interactive Engine Oil. Once again it's an enamel but this one has more of a glossy oily finish. It does genuinely look like dirty oil. This is really good for putting in areas where you've got moving parts where you can have some sort of like greasy oily bits to help it move. Because it's glossy it adds a bit of a colour variation as well to that uh, metallic black steel. Obviously when you're using enamels you need to use either an enamel thinner or something like that to clean your brushes in between. Okay, time for the base. Now I'm going to do more of a desert theme for this one to tie in with the rest of the orcs that I have. And I've done a separate tutorial on this. Um, have a look on our Exploring Hobby Basics and you'll find it in there. Whilst this is quite a simple base, I want to add a bit of colour variation and a bit of interest in there. So I'm going to paint these rocks more of a sandstone sort of colour to make them stand out from the base.
The final stage is to use the Tamiya Weathering Master. This is set A. There's B, C, D, and so on. All different colours, different effects. So this one, I've got a sand, a light sand, and a mud. So I'm going to use the sponge a bit and just dab it over a bit of sand and the different colours over the base to help tie it all together a little bit, especially over the rocks to help get that sort of that wind blown sand effect. And a little bit over the model itself to help to tie the model into his environment. If he's been walking around in a dry and sandy area, he's going to have dust and sand all over him as well. And the very final thing, just a chocolate brown around the base to neaten up and finish off. So there you go. And here's the finished result. Really enjoyed this one. Uh, I learned quite a lot about trying out different things and trying out some of the inks and the paints that I used today I haven't used before. So never be afraid to try out new things and see how it goes. Experiment, play with it. Also don't get too caught up about, about making mistakes on your models. Have fun with it. Play, try different effects, see how things work out and I hope you like the result. I'm really quite impressed with this guy. I like it. If you like that, please bash that like button. Please consider bashing that subscribe button. And I will see you next time on the next video as we continue to explore the world of miniature modeling. Take care. Bye.